Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. The other day, a viewer commented on one of my videos and asked, why am I using a set neck construction method on my V-shaped guitar when I should be using a neck through method of construction? Especially since I have a CNC machine, it wouldn't be that difficult for me to do that. And he explained in his comment that, uh, you know, everyone knows that a neck through design has better tone and better sustain. At the same time, I got a comment from another viewer who wanted to know my opinions about certain components. And I'm not going to explain what those components are, but my response to that uh, comment was that I felt the components that they were asking about were, yeah, they work, but they're gimmicks. And I got a lot of heat back for that comment. But what this did is it kind of got me to thinking sort of defensively about the choices I make when I design and build a guitar. And I think I've got this unique perspective on the subject and I wanted to bring it up because I think it might be something that's useful to you if you're new to building guitars and are thinking about tackling a guitar project. And that is if a certain method of construction or a certain type of component is widely regarded as so much better than anything else out there, why isn't every single guitar made using that construction method or that component? The, the fact of the matter is they're not. The guitars come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes, all different types of woods, different methods of construction, and different components. Because a guitar is a, is a pretty simple instrument in basically how it functions. And in a short span of time from the early 1950s through about the mid 60s, there were a lot of innovations with regard to uh, the electric guitar specifically in terms of the uh, type of component selection and methods of construction and the type of woods. And it was quickly uh, discovered that you don't need to really um, overcomplicate the matter of building guitars. And so what ended up happening is we ended up with the Gibson Les Paul SG, the Fender Stratocaster, the Fender Telecaster, and you know a few other semi-hollows and hollow body guitars, but they basically set the standard for how all the guitars were going to be made. And that's kind of what we see as far as guitars being constructed today. But there have been a number of innovations in, in as far as the type of components that are available. And there have been some uh, different approaches to making guitar necks, like laminated guitar necks and neck through construction. But it begs the question, if any of these new innovations are so great, why isn't every guitar made with those components? And the fact of the matter is, a lot of the big guitar companies that uh, mass produce large number of guitars have experimented with those type of components. Uh, I've experimented on my own, and I'm just a small, you know, one man uh, small shop luthier. And I've come to realize that the promise that some of these methods of construction and some of these components have isn't always worth the effort. So when it comes to building a guitar, for example, um, with a neck through construction, it may have a, uh, a premium look and feel to it, or at least some folks would assign it a premium look and feel. But the reality is it doesn't really improve anything. You can still get fantastic, even spectacular tone and sustain from just a simple bolt-on guitar neck. It all has to do with the quality of craftsmanship when the guitar was assembled. So it doesn't really matter whether you're using a bolt-in neck, a set-in neck, or a neck through. And that's one of the reasons why you're not going to see Gibson suddenly switch to making nothing but uh, neck through Les Pauls. So if the neck through method of construction was so amazing, so phenomenal, and so great, every Les Paul coming out would be a neck through. And 
In fact, every guitar made by anybody would be a neck through. And I would venture to say that eventually at some point, even Fender would make all their uh, Telecasters and Stratocasters with a neck through design because they wouldn't be able to sell guitar otherwise because people would be looking for that type of construction. And another good example is with regard to components. Um, take, for example, a, well, a roller bridge or a roller nut. They've been around for a while and they enjoy a, f a fair degree of popularity. But if they were so great, if they work so well, why isn't every guitar with a tunematic or you know a hardtail for that uh, for that matter equipped with a roller bridge? And if the roller nut was so great, why isn't every guitar fitted with a roller nut? The reason is is because they they while they do what they are advertised to do to a certain degree, they aren't that spectacular. And some folks will say, yeah, but you know, with a roller uh, nut, you can do better string bending and your guitar stays in better tune when you're using a tremolo and all this stuff. Well, the same is true if you're using just regular bone nut and cutting the slots uh, appropriately. So in the end, I think what I'm trying to say is before you set out to design your guitar that you want to build, any of the features of the components that you're thinking of using, and this even extends to the species of wood that you might be using, ask yourself a question. Is it really that important uh, to consider those components? Or can you just go with what is fairly uh, common you know, as in the marketplace and not have to worry about whether or not it's going to function uh, in the manner that you hope. Because going from a set neck to a bolt-on neck to a neck through, uh, you know, it's going to require some additional uh, work as far as putting it together and building it and some additional skills. But in the end, is it really going to improve it that much? Because I'd hate to see somebody spend a lot of time or a lot of money on certain woods or certain construction methods or certain components. And then the first time they play the guitar, they think, wow, that's not as spectacular as I thought it would be. Or, wow, I spent a lot of money and time on this and it sounds the same as my Squire Telecaster <laughs> or uh, my uh, Epiphone Les Paul. So before you make those decisions, you might want to think through the choices that you're going to make and then, you know, ask yourself that question. If this is such a great idea, why isn't all guitars being manufactured with this idea? And then you can go from there. It's not really that difficult. So uh, at any rate, that's what I wanted to talk about today. And, and hopefully I've expressed myself in a way that makes sense. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video or any of my other videos, click the thumbs up button. Uh, if you're new to the channel again, welcome. I hope that you'll consider subscribing. And I hope that uh, you'll take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in my next episode.